out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Be viewing out the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. Hi viewers, welcome once again to the outpouring. And on this program, I share different things from my heart, which I trust it's a blessing to you when I share it. From time to time, as I walk and as I talk, I meet people and, you know, they would mention that they are tuned into the program and it's been a blessing to them. However, on Saturday, I had a very interesting experience for the first time someone called well you know someone and i would say a stranger because i've had calls from friends already but a total stranger called just to say that you know she looked at the program she was blessed and she you know she wanted to keep the number in case she needed prayer or support and uh, for me it was really really very encouraging because week after week you know you'd come to the studio and share different topics uh, and uh, pray for people and sometimes have a guest on the program and you hardly have much feedback and your prayer is constantly God I hope I am reaching people I am sharing your word and that the program is a blessing so it's really nice when I got that feedback on Saturday so I encourage you if you are viewing this program, you can feel free to call. Let me know if the program is a blessing. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, because constructive criticism is also very good, you know, so that we can grow and do things that will be an uh, inspiration and a blessing to those who are viewing. So thank you for all your thoughts and for just viewing the program. And I will make a deposit of thanks to you who will call in at a later date. Last week we spoke about, and I did a repeat of that program, we spoke about this self-same Jesus. And, you know, we can talk about Jesus, Jesus, and it's which Jesus, which Jesus, you know. And as I continue in today's program, not necessarily in that same vein, but connecting with that there is a scripture reading where jesus asked his disciples you know he sat with them and he asked them well who do people say that i am you know who is jesus and i will now read that portion of scripture and then we will talk about that and we will talk a lot a little more about peter because peter he is uh, one of the very interesting disciples, you know, he had a way of putting his foot in his mouth. He had a way of being excited, exuberant, a whole lot of stuff. But when you package him from the beginning to the end, he is really, really a great inspiration and a great teacher to us as we walk this Christian life. So I'm going to minister today on the portion of scripture. And it reads, And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjuna, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I have read the scripture quite a few times, you know, for every time you read the Gospels or you're reading through the Bible each year or how many times a year, you know, you read through the scripture, but the word of God is just so powerful and uh, so fresh with revelation that I, I, I noticed something for the very first time. When, Pete, when Jesus asks the question, and it reminds me of, you know, of, of our lives. A lot of people will have different things to say about us. So they answer and they say, well, some say you are Elijah, some say John the Baptist, you know, come back, some say Jeremiah. So different persons will have different things to say in light of how they see you and, you know, who they could reference you to. But Simon said, Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God, and it was, it was like a revelation because I think when he said it, he and all surprised himself. And uh, Jesus answered him, and he said, he said, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you. So it means that somewhere in Peter's spirit, connecting to God, that moment's revelation came, and. That is also an example of what the, the, the life that Peter was going to live and his understanding and revelation of things. So that was that answer just gave him a preview of what his future will be. But what is very interesting in this portion of scripture is that after Peter said to Jesus who Jesus was, Peter was then positioned to be told who he will become and what his future will be. And I found that to be so interesting. And, you know, we could liken that also in our own lives. When we come to that place where we fully understand who Jesus is, not just Jesus, but Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, when we come into that deep sound awareness, that could become like a mirror to us where we could now begin to see what is his will for our lives and who we are and who we are yet to become. And I want to just read this script here again so that what I just shared, you will begin to see it in that light. And it will, and it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You know, and you may find from time to time as I, as I share on my programs, I would repeat certain things. I strongly believe that repetition helps with learning, and sometimes we don't catch it the first time 
And as we repeat it or as we meditate on it, it tends to stick somewhere, you know. So I will repeat certain things for added emphasis and to help us remember and to, you know, in case we miss something the first time it was read, we will catch it on the second. So we see here Peter being, after he gave the correct answer, being told who he was and whom he will become and a glimpse of the power that he will walk in on the earth but the interesting thing about peter is not too long after that happened he had another episode where <laughs> and jesus said unto him depart from me satan you know so in our walk and in our processing we we not fully converted as yet because in the next script that i'm going to read jesus would have said to peter when you are converted feed my sheep and you know we on our walk especially in our early walk with christ we're not at that full place of conversion as yet peter he was so passionate and god later in his ministry used his passion and his commitment and all of that but there was a time in peter's life where it was really just his words because when jesus spoke about being um going to the cross and all that and everybody leaving him. Peter was like, and that was Peter's person. I say, me, Lord, never, not me. If everybody else forsake you, I'm not going to because that was Peter's intention. However, because he wasn't fully at that mature and converted place, we see where Peter denied Jesus three times. And we also, when we look at the ending of his life and as, uh, on, at his ministry, you know, there are glimpses of it in the book of Acts and also in the two epistles uh, that Peter wrote. We see where he came into that strong, strong place. And it's my understanding that even at death, when it was time for him to be, to be killed, he did not deny Christ at that time as he did at the beginning of his ministry. However, he said, I am not worthy to die in the way in which my Savior and Master died. So he was crucified uh, upside down, you know. And uh, all this goes to show and to encourage and to teach us that our walk with the Lord it's at different stages of conversion. It's at different stages of knowledge. We could be passionate with a lot of zeal, a lot of excitement, and say a whole lot of things. But when the rubber hits the road, our behavior is something different. Or even in the area of sin, we may say, me, I'm not doing that I saved, you know. And when that temptation comes, because we're not in a fully mature place, we end up not being able to follow through with the words that we would have spoken. So our words are disconnected to our actions. But as we mature in Christ and as we are grounded in the word and as we fellowship one with another, go to church, spend time meditating upon the word, our words and our actions begin to line up and it comes into a harmonious flow where we become the bible that people would read and that's that's where we have to strive to that's what we have to try to become that's when we come to that place of full conversion the word of god also says working out your own salvation with fear and trembling so it is indeed a process a process of good intentions to actions that eventually become habits and it becomes our way of life so i'm going to share with you another area of scripture and this um, is where the the lord was speaking to peter again and the lord said simon simon and you know sometimes when you call somebody name twice or you you repeat it's for added emphasis and he, the lord said simon simon Satan had desired to have you so that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren or feed the sheep. And I will read it again. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, 
Behold, Satan had desired to have you so that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. And this little area is so packed. It's packed with so much information. And the truth is, you know, the devil, he desire, his desire is to sift us. His desire is to take us off track. The word of God said he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And in this text here, his desire was to have Peter and to sift him as wheat, to carry him through the ringer. But Jesus said, he said, and you know, it's interesting to see what Jesus prayed. Jesus didn't pray that Satan's desire will not be accomplished. He didn't pray that uh, Peter will not be sifted. But his prayer was that Peter's faith will fail not. Because a lot of times, our, the sifting that we will go through is necessary for us to develop spiritual muscles. For those of you who work out or do weight training, to develop your muscles, you got to work them and you develop your physical muscles. You have good muscle tone, good strength. And it's much the same way in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, you got to go through stuff. You got to be pressed and squeezed and sifted so that you develop that spiritual muscle. And Jesus prayed for Peter that in that time of his sifting, that his faith would fail not. And we ought to take an example from this in that it's also our responsibility to pray for one another. It's our responsibility to pray for those who are in a, in a weaker state than we are. You know, we may have been converted for, for quite a while or our walk with, with the Lord we have matured and we have become strong in a lot of areas. So now it's our responsibility to pray for the weaker ones, to pray for the younger ones. Sometimes you may look at, at certain new believers and you can see the passion and the excitement, just like how Jesus saw Peter. You may even see what their future will become if you have that prophetic eye. And in seeing all of that, you know that it's just a matter of time before they're going to be tested. They're going to be pressed, shaken, and they're going to be sifted. And it's your responsibility to pray for such ones that when they are going through that time, that their faith will not faint. And it's a plug there for prayer, the word of God throughout the entire Bible, especially, you know, in a lot of the epistles that Paul wrote, you know, they would always begin and end where Paul would be saying to the different churches about how he's praying for them and how he's laboring for them in prayer. We see Jesus doing much the same thing throughout his life where, you know, he would rise early in the morning, spend time praying. And in this little air portion of scripture, he said that he prayed for Peter, that Peter's faith would fail not. And he goes on to tell Peter, he said, And when thou art converted, <coughs> excuse me, strengthen the brethren. So our full conversion or our maturity or our passing through stuff where we become strengthened or where we learn, it's not just for us. It's for us now to strengthen those who are coming up behind. The Christian walk is one of such, and it's, it's not only the responsibility of the pastor. Yes, the pastor, he is the shepherd of the flock, but even as fellow believers in church, we have a responsibility to be our brother's keeper. We have a responsibility to help those who are not as strong to pull up the weaker ones, to share our experience, to testify. Even, you know, what, what I'm doing here and what a lot of Christian TV is about is really putting the word out there, sharing our testimony so that others could learn from it. We don't all know everything. And this is why we need each other. We need pastors. We need apostles. We need prophets. We need teachers. We need the evangelists. We need all the different aspects, the teachers, all the different areas in the fivefold ministry. And because they will enable us 
to grow and to be fully converted. And, you know, I feel really led at this point in time to just stop and to pray for those of you who may be viewing this program at this present time and you're going through some stuff. You probably having a sifting going on or you probably being really pressed like the grapes to get the juice out or like the olives so you are in the press however be encouraged you are going to come true there's a saying that we have is this too will pass and the truth of the matter is this too will pass and you are going to grow the devil, he is an agent that God uses. He's not his own boss. God is his boss. And God will use him. What he will send your way to be evil or he will want to sift you or anything he will want to do. God will use that to bring out the best in you. So you know what? God is ultimately in charge and he is the boss of the devil. So he could only go according to his instructions or his, you know, what God would have him to do. And, you, you know, you may wonder, even as I say this, well, why God allowing these things? But there is a day coming when the devil, he will be taken care of. But that day is not uh, yet has not come as yet so right now he is on god's payroll even though his intentions are evil and he's here to steal kill and destroy god could say this far and no further and we see that in the book of job we see that even in this verse where jesus said to peter satan desire to sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you so he has his work to do but we have ours also Father, I give you thanks at this point in time. God, I thank you for your word. Father, I truly thank you, God, that, uh, you know, I have the opportunity, be, opportunity to be on this network, Father, to share your word. And God, those who are listening to this program and viewing this program, even right now, who may be going through various challenges or who may be sifted or who may be pressed at this point in time, Father, I pray for them, even as Jesus prayed for Peter, oh God, that in this hour of tribulation or this hour of trial or testing or this season of their life where they may be going through the fire, Lord, Father, I pray, God, that their faith will fail not. Father, cause them to be strengthened in this time. God, cause them to be able to come through God as pure gold. Father, we, we, we bring to remembrance even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. When in his soul he was going through, that he even wished that the cup will pass, God. And there are people who are viewing and they wish even now, God, that they didn't have to go through what they're going through or that somehow it will just move. Oh God, for those who may even be so depressed by what is happening, that they wish to die. Oh, Father. God, even as you sent angels to strengthen Jesus in the garden, and even as Jesus prayed for Peter, Father, I pray, God, that you send your angels on assignment even right now to strengthen those who are weak. God, to lift up the knees, God, of those that seem to be feeble at this point. God, the hands that are dropping, God, help them to hold it up. God, those who are discouraged, God, those who may be frustrated, God, those who, you know, may, may be going through so much things, confusion that they, they, they're not even too sure where to turn and what to do and who to speak to. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Christ, this, your son, God, I pray for those. God, I pray for them. God, we are living in a time and you know this time. God, where, you know, it's almost as if we are hard pressed on every side. God, where the hours of the day just seem not enough for all that we have to accomplish. God, where sometimes it's as if sleep will evade us and friends will forsake us and loved ones will just disappear. But Father, I pray. God, I pray. God, you give us that privilege of 
prayer where we ought to pray for one another. God, I pray, God, that even at this time, God, that people's strength will not fail them. God, those who may be sick, God, those who, you know, may be having problems, God, with their children, God, those who may be having problems in their marriage, God, those who may not have been paid, God, the last couple months, oh God, those who seem to be, you know, getting into different altercations with their neighbors, God, what Ever the, 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 the name of the challenge, the name of the problem, the name of the sifting is at this point in time. Father, 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 in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for such ones. Oh God, that your Holy Spirit will just penetrate their environment. Oh, Father, God, that you will lift them. God, that you will heal their emotions. God, those who feel that as if there is no way. God, that you will send a way in the midst of their hopelessness. God, that you will bring fresh hope. God, those who have lost faith. God, that faith will be renewed, Father. Oh, God, cause out of this program today. God, that testimonies would come. God, if even people don't call. But, oh, God, cause them today to be the recipient God of miracles miracles God let them be the recipients of signs and wonders God let them be the recipient God of your wonder working miraculous power God you are the God that said that your ear is ever listening to our cry and God today I cry with them and I cry on their behalf father God you said that your eyes roam to and fro the earth God, you said, Father, that your hand is not too short, that it cannot reach. Oh, Father, God, I pray that you will see. God, that you will hear. God, that you will stretch your hand. God, that you will send help. God, that you will send miracles. Oh, God, that people, God, will be encouraged. God, that faith will be restored and renewed. God, those who are feeling at the end of the rope, God, that they will receive fresh anointing anointing, fresh fire, fresh vision, fresh strength. Oh God, give them a glimpse, God, that this situation that they may be in right now, it is just temporary. God, open their eyes, uh, cause them to lift their eyes from where they are looking down. God, to the future that you have for them. God, show them, God, the, the end product, God, so they will be able to be strengthened, God, to go through what this present situation is causing them to go through. Father, I thank you, God, that you hear and that you answer prayer and that you are a very present help in time of trouble. Father, I thank you for Jeremiah 33, 3 that says, call and you will answer and show us great and mighty things. So on their behalf today, God, I call. God, I come in agreement. Oh, Father, Oh God, oh God, oh God help, oh God strengthen, oh God heal. In the name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. I don't know, I just felt, uh, you know, such a, a presence for prayer. And uh, I am basically at the end of the program with just one minute left but i i truly hope that this program has been a blessing to you that you would touch that you will heal that you will deliver that something met with your situation in your home in your space and in your place viewers uh, this has been the outpouring for your everything that you got today god bless you shalom Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit. Pour Reviewing out the outpouring your for your refreshing out. and infilling. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour